live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City for the Big Data NYC event. We're here live, getting all the action in New York City at Hadoop World, Strata Conference, all happening this week, a lot of action. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and talk to the thought leaders, talk to the pioneers, talk to the entrepreneurs, CEOs, customers, get that data, share that with you. Um, and want to thank all of our supporters out there for theCUBE, we really appreciate it. I'm John Furrier, joining Dave Vellante here uh, in New York City. Our next guest is uh, one of my favorite guests of all time on theCUBE, one of our top tech athletes, as we'll see, Amr Awadallah, co-founder of Cloudera. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, You've, you've been on, God, you've been in theCUBE so many times, you're up there with Pat Gelsinger and, and uh, all the other <laughs> tech athletes, but you know, we did an interview back at, uh, years ago, three years ago, when, yeah. when you were Even kind more. enough to let Silicon Angle sit in the Cloudera space when you had mm -hmm. like 30 employees. Mm -hmm. um, you said a quote to me, I'll never forget, it was a really epic quote, you said, you know, I started Cloudera, I started Cloudera because when I was at Yahoo and I was doing my work uh, as an entrepreneur, I saw the future, mm -hmm. and I wanted to create the future. So mm -hmm. I, my first question to you is, it was right. The future is here, <laughs> and the validation here at Hadoop World this year is is, is really complete validation for Hadoop. Yep. Um, you're seeing the maturization, the grounds uh, hardening around certain areas. Certainly, the data platform, mm -hmm. the data hub, as you guys are announcing, mm -hmm. is the modern platform. It's yep. happening. Customers are adopting. It's not just POCs. It's scaling. Yep. So I got to ask you, how do you feel about that? And and you know, on a personal level, and then your observations here this week, given the history. Yeah, so obviously I feel great. I mean, uh, <laughs> absolutely, you're absolutely right. I mean, in our pitch to investors back then, again, all of us, I mean, I'm one of the founders of the Caldera, there's a number of us. Uh, so we, we, yeah, we would go into the investors and we would say, we, 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 it's back to the future. I mean, we're coming from the future, being, being at companies like Yahoo and Facebook and, uh, and uh, uh, Google, uh, we saw the future, we saw what it looks like. And we came back with, the, what was the name of the car from Back to the Future? The DeLorean? The I think. DeLorean. The DeLorean. <laughs> we came back with the DeLorean, and we're telling you, this is how it's going to be five years from now with, for everybody, not just for web companies. Uh, web companies just happen to be at the tip of the iceberg. They saw it first because of their businesses all being done in the web. But everybody, all of us across industries, we are moving uh, bigger chunks of our business to be running uh, online. Right? We're moving more of our business to be running within servers, and we're instrumenting bigger parts of our business with new uh, sensor networks, with uh, GPS equipment, with uh, RFID tags, et cetera, et cetera. So we are more sophisticated than ever in terms of data collection, and it doesn't take you a lot of uh, genius to figure out that that means that you're going to have a mountain of data and that means you're going to have many different types of data which would require this kind of system. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, we also, uh, you know, years ago when you were actually at Yahoo, when my last startup, PodTech, we did a podcast, you were one of our, my first uh, guests there too, and one of the things that I noticed about your background, your unique insight with the, with the Facebook and the Google co-founders and yep. at Yahoo was, you also have a background in virtualization and also you gaming this, but there's also a lot of physical infrastructure at the behind the scenes of big data yeah. that you had a window into. Hence, the virtualization trend has now exploded. Yeah. Um, so that also plays into it. So you have this confluence of big trends, right, that, that yes. have happened yes. uh, at the infrastructure level, yep. and then certainly obviously with Hadoop and storing data and making it accessible. Yep. Um, how does that relate in this? Because we're hearing enterprise ready is a key theme. You guys have Absolutely. an enterprise edition. Absolutely. So talk about the, the confluence of this software defined data center concept that's being promoted heavily out there. And how, do, how does that, what does that mean to the folks out there in the big data community? Because that's under the hood. Right, so you know, there's a lot of action on top of the of the of the convergence. What's what's your take on that infrastructure for customers and the industry? Yeah, we, we we're start, we're starting to see the intersection of uh, big data and virtualization take place. So we, we're starting to see the first signs of that. In fact, a, a story that we also discussed back then uh, when we talked the first time is how Cloudera we changed our business model, actually, of what the company does. Our name is Cloudera. Uh, because the initial pitch, the initial business model that we were going to do is build a cloud service where our customers can upload their data to the cloud, process the data, and then download the results. So we were going to be a cloud business, hence the name Cloudera. Uh, but then very quickly, uh, we start realizing that no, what most companies want to do, they want to be able to deploy these technologies within their enterprise. Uh, they don't want to move their data outside of their body. Actually, we would say that data is like blood. Data is like the blood that uh, flows within the veins of the enterprise. 
And just like humans, nobody wants their blood to be outside of their body. We want our blood inside of our veins. Uh, now, and that's why we didn't see big data moving into the cloud or moving into virtual environments per se as well. That's starting to shift. We're seeing a shift happen now where enterprises are getting more comfortable moving their data into virtual environments and into the cloud. It's just the beginning, it's just beginning to happen. And hence why we announced all these partnerships over uh, during this conference uh, with companies like Verizon Enterprise, IBM Software, uh, T-Systems, and uh, yeah, there's another key one I'm forgetting right now, but that's okay. Yes. Pretty, much uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody. Yeah, pretty much everybody. Yes. yes. Uh, we really work with Amazon and, and yes, Savage yeah. CenturyLink. Thank you. Wow, welcome. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> We're paying attention. <laughs> yes, you're paying attention. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you don't have to change your name to on premise. Yeah, exactly. On premise. Right? Exactly. So we're not going to on premise. We're not going to do on premise. We're going to stay with Cloudera. <laughs> and essentially, good. what we're saying is, yeah, we're enabling essentially selling the the, sh the tools that enable you to have a big data platform running. On, the on premise, on premise on virtual infrastructure with uh, VMware or uh, OpenStack is the other uh, standard we are, we're supporting, and in the cloud with, the, with a number of vendors. So and that's how we see the future. Mike, being a hybrid the, I, I know you, you were customer meetings, so you didn't see all of Mike's keynote, but I, th yeah. I think it was he who made the point that, you know, way back when, you know, when we started, you know, Hadoop World, we talked about the sort of fundamental change in mindset of keeping the data where it is, shipping the code, et cetera, et cetera. So. Essentially, that's not problematic that the customers have a lot of data. His point was once you get a petabyte of data, you don't want to move it. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. But I guess it's not a problem because you've got a petabyte of data on site, great, and you want to do more stuff in the cloud, you'll just, how, how will that sort of migration occur? You won't move the data, you'll just start doing more external analysis in the cloud and you'll have a federated data structure? Is that what you will hy the hybrid the future, data hub is The about? future will be hybrid. I have no doubts about that. Mm -hmm. There's some organizations that care a lot about uh, security and care a lot about uh, high performance, super high performance. Uh, so you can see that with like special um, financial institutions or uh, medical companies where for them it would be very hard to move the data into the cloud. So that, that might not happen for them for all of their data. But I think the majority of enterprises will have a hybrid environment where either new projects will launch in the cloud or the older data will get moved to the cloud. So you're absolutely right in that data movement is expensive, and data, both in terms of bandwidth but also people, uh, time spent. Uh, but over time, that will get uh, better. So is it the case today that the, a, a lot of the action is with you know, super large companies, financial firms, you know, big government agencies, et cetera, and this just opens, the cloud opens up the door for the little guys to now compete with the big guys, and it's always oh, a story with cloud, right? Uh, absolutely. So, so yeah, so if, if for a new company, a new startup, a new business, they just start in the cloud. And that's that, that, very natural for that to happen. Obviously, the question mark, the big question mark we had is the big businesses that really have been around for, 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 for tens if not hundreds of years, will they start shifting their data into the cloud? And that's what we're starting to see happen. Yeah, we've had some interesting talks around you know, the whole security you know, meme, and there are a lot of people who believe that, that security in the cloud is going to be better than security in the vast majority of, of, of enterprises. Yep. But I, the, I am I'm one of those believers. But, but if, I, and I am too, but if the, if the customer doesn't believe it, I guess it doesn't matter. But yeah. you, you, you see that perception changing, I mean, especially on Wall Street. I, I don't see it changing, frankly. But yes. other parts of the, other, other industries, you do see it changing. Would you yes. agree? Because it goes, back, it goes back to skill sets. It's very hard to hire, to hire the kind of skill sets that can guarantee the security levels that you care about. So uh, um, companies like Amazon, Google, they're able to hire essentially the top security experts in the world. Now, a lot of the financial institutions, they have the top experts in the world when it comes to security. And they have much more stricter requirements on not just electronic security, but physical security, like who moves into, who can actually go into the cage inside of the data center, scanning their fingers and doing full background checks on, on them and so on. And they just have levels that are way higher than what Amazon or Google can provide today. And they value that as part of their core assets. So that's why we don't see them shifting. But for the majority of other enterprises, yeah, of course. I, Amazon can do much better job at security than I can. Mm. So that's absolutely part of this movement. There's no question about that. So the other piece is, I remember you and I talked, it was several you know, stratas ago, but yeah. there was virtually no competition for you and all. There's competition, which is great. It's, a, it's, it's what you expected, I'm sure, because of this huge, huge yeah. market. But one of the other things that when, when competitors early started to come in, they said, well, we're going to make Hadoop Enterprise ready. You're a very humble guy. You said, it was kind of off-putting to you, I could tell that. You said, yeah, well, we know a little bit about making Hadoop yeah, Enterprise ready as well. Yeah. So you've been marching you know, down that path. Ultimately, it's turned out to be really good for the customer, right? Yeah. So, so where are we in, this, in the state of Hadoop being Enterprise ready? It feels like it's there. I think uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, we have customers today running Hadoop in production environments, mission critical, 24 by 7, for two or three years already. 
If that's not enterprise ready, then what is, mm. right? I mean, we have very large enterprises, Fortune 1000 companies, running this system in mission critical production environments. What is the definition of enterprise ready if it's not that? Yeah, right. You can talk about scale and security and blah, blah, blah all you want. It's, it's that. It's that. <laughs> it's the proof is in the pudding. Did he actually, can he actually do it? Did he do it? For how many years did he do it? And I think we have all of these check marks. Yeah. Let's so that's, that's, how I, that's how I look at the, to answer the question. I want, I want to talk about the platform side yes. of it. Obviously, um, platforms are OSs. I mean, you know, we yes. talk about a data, data, data operating system. And, yes. you know, whether you're looking at it in the stack, it's a data fabric, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But what you guys just announced with the data hub, essentially it's an operating environment, right? You're decoupling, map reduce, there's all kinds of yarns out there. Different elements are coming in that yeah. can be, I don't want to say plug and play, but they're highly cohesive elements. And, and a lot of those white spaces that we've talked about over the years are filling in. Mm -hmm. You're seeing real time now developing fast, machine learning, a lot of cool tech is coming in. Um, so give us a, your, your vision on the data platform, the yes. data OS, the data hub that you guys have rolled out yes. for the industry. I mean, there's a vision of what it should look like in a preferred state yeah. of harmony because the growth is, is off the charts. So people want more. They want more Hadoop. They want more integrated into either existing systems. You see SAP playing here. You see others coming in. So Hadoop is here. Yes. So how does that data platform, that OS, look like? Yes. Th thank you for the question. That's an excellent question. Uh, so first, again, to, to give another uh, aspect of how we predicted the future, uh, if people were to go to YouTube right now and search for the word Hadoop, just search for the word Hadoop on YouTube, one of the fir very first videos that will show up is one of my talks from a number of years ago. Where that's ex that's what we said where we were going to be. We described the data operating system. We described that's going to be about how many applications will come into this uh, ecosystem. So the way we look at this is there's an existing market called the EDW market, the Enterprise Data Warehouse market. We, we are saying now there's a new market called the Enterprise Data Hub market, ED, EDH, right? So there's EDW, there's EDH. Us, Cloudera, being the very first leaders of this movement, we are naming that. That is the name of our market, the market that we're in, as Mike shared in his keynote uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. So again, then comes the question is, why do we need an EDH when we already had an EDW? What's really different here? And the analogy we, uh, I, I like, love to use is, an EDW is like a digital SLR camera. You know the digital SLR cameras, they have very big lenses, and uh, they can take really good pictures. So what an EDW can do is take really, really good pictures, meaning it can run queries really fast. It's a bit pricey, but, but it's really good at doing that. However, it's the only thing it can do, just like the SLR camera. An SLR camera can only take pictures. Okay, maybe it can take videos too, but that's it. The vision for the EDH, on the other hand, the EDH, the Enterprise Data Hub, is more like an Android device or an iPhone, right? So the, more like an Android device, given the open source nature of Hadoop, it's more like an Android device, I guess. So an EDH can take pretty good pictures, right? It can take pretty good pictures. However, they won't be, the EDH pictures won't be as good as the SLR camera, just like the iPhone pictures is not as good as the SLR camera but they're very good and they're at a much more economical price. In fact, if you were to ask a lot of people in a room to raise their hands if they took a picture with their iPhone versus an SLR camera, the majority will say, we took a picture with an iPhone or with an Android. However, the only thing, the only thing that, uh, and, uh, the, the, the main thing that differentiates an EDH is that the EDH is not just about taking pictures. It can do many, many other things. It can take pictures, but it can also uh, run interactive queries, it can also do search, it can also do machine learning, it can also do statistics, et cetera, et cetera, It can play songs, it can run It's important apps, to know that you're right? referring to the I data mean, to warehouse. Take it, taking the, uh, yes. the metaphor to back to the smartphones, right? Exactly, and some of, the, yeah, some of the apps will yeah. come from us, other apps will come from companies like SaaS now run inside of the platform, Splunk has Hunk, I don't know if you guys have yeah. yeah, you oh, know about Hunk, yeah, right? Yeah. So Hunk now runs in front of the platform, Informatica now is run inside the platform, because we know, like some apps will be good at building, but the majority of the apps will not be, we will not be good at those. So apps. I love this analogy, because yeah. you, you, you asked the question, if you have an EDW, why do you need an EDH? And then the flip side of that question, if you have an EDH, why do you need an EDW? Your answer answered that. Yes, um, yes, because so for that, some pictures. <laughs> but I always say, I lo the reason I love that is because I say, which business would you rather be in, the SLR business or the smartphone business? And I, and I guess for you, obviously, the, the smartphone business, but it does depend, right? Because there's some people who, it's a, new, it's a new, business, it's a new, it's a new. They're not doing case. that well. So, well, I think the analogy <laughs> and, is and the EDW business may be a safer place with good yeah. cash flow. So, so. I'll, I'll let you do the projections <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll so. let you do the projections. Oh, the, the projections future. are clear. That, <laughs> the, the EDH market is going to be enormous, and the EDW market is going to kind of go yeah. sideways for a long I mean, time. You, you can see from the attendance and yeah. the people.
at this event how big of the interest yeah, is, but we're still way at the beginning of this movement. Yeah. We are kind of in the first year of when the iPhone came out. Consumer devices obviously can grow at much quicker rates than enterprises. Enterprises are doing major changes inside the architecture. It takes longer yeah. for that to happen. Now, the impressive thing about this movement is how quickly it is happening yeah. within the enterprise. Never within the enterprise has an infrastructure technology matured and evolved mm -hmm. into how big this event is right now at this speed. It's just never happened before. It didn't happen with VMware. It didn't happen with, with Linux, with the Linux movement. It didn't happen with the database movement. Well, the major, this is the, just the, the interesting thing to me is that the average age of an enterprise app is like 19 years. There you go. Right? And yet, 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 the value proposition for all this new stuff yep. is so compelling yep. that, it's, that it's, it's happening despite happening. that. Yep. You know? So, so I, want, I want to ask a question. We've got a little Twitter action here on the crowd. <laughs> Someone said, uh, just, I'm gonna just, and then I have another question. Uh, yes. Amr, what, curious, what mission critical workloads are they running? Your customers. Uh, what examples of mission critical right. workloads? Well, we just tweeted, hey, you know, three years, it's enterprise ready, you mentioned, we have customers running it. What, what mission critical workloads are they running? Like an example of a mission critical yeah, yeah. workload. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, I should have been prepared to give an answer. The reason why I'm not prepared is uh, we work with a lot of customers like big banks and big telecommunication companies that are very secretive about exactly what, the, what they're doing <laughs> with the technology, especially the ones doing the mission uh, critical workloads. But I mean, some examples that, uh, that, that we use commonly is obviously we help the government today. We help the government in terms of predicting when the next terrorist event will take place or who is going to do that, right? So yeah. I, I frequently would joke and say, I'm a victim of being, I'm from the Middle East and I have brown skin and I frequently would get stopped at airports just because I look this way. I would rather the government analyze my data <laughs> and know that no, Armour is a good guy, it's not stop that guy. Right? So I would rather have that. Unless they look at me and Dave, you know, <laughs> we have the data on these guys. guys stop the bad guys. <laughs> so that's just one way how, how our systems yeah. are being used in mission critical environments to, to make it. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back well, to but that. But, but if I may, so I mean, you, we don't have to name names, but down yes. here, I mean, certainly there's, there's, there's risk. You know, credit risk. Oh, yeah, yeah. The use cases. I can, I can mention you know, use yeah, cases. Why don't you talk use cases? Yeah, yeah use yeah. cases, of course, like in finance, uh, uh, doing risk modeling for how we offer loans or how economies are actually going to be subjected to risk is a very, very key use case. Uh, fraud detection in, yeah. in finance. So three of the top uh, credit card companies, I can't say the names, but you can think who are the four top credit card companies. Three of those are customers of ours using this technology for uh, doing uh, fraud detection and detecting when a transaction is a fraud transaction or not. That's a very good, uh, yeah. that's another very good example. Uh, one of the largest agriculture companies that uh, essentially researches new types of seeds that can grow in different environments under different uh, conditions and temperatures uh, is using this technology to come up with these new types of seeds. And, and cetera, I would put, cetera, it, I would put marketing into that mission critical list. I mean, people don't generally think of you know, marketing, uh, real time oh, yeah. ad serving as mission critical, but it is now because oh, it's driving revenue. And if you're, not, absolutely. if you're not there, you're not competitive. So absolutely. that's mission critical today. Absolutely. And, and like, yeah, the, one of the most common use cases is doing all the analytics on Twitter and all of the online marketing, all the advertising happening. That's one of uh, very- Yeah, Hammerbacher complains about it, but there's, yes. there's good things that that's will come why, out of that. So, yeah, we, we are more proud of the use cases that are <laughs> social impact and that are changing our lives in a positive yeah. way as opposed to use cases which are just help, helping people But pay maybe some interesting research will come out of that, some kind of socioeconomic... It's good for uh, the economy, research, obviously, right? yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I, I gotta, without ads, the economy will <laughs> not survive. I, gotta, I, gotta, I wanna ask another question. I didn't mean to get sidetracked uh, on that, but... Uh, it's a good question. Tim, Tim, Tim <laughs> Craw Crawford got his, got his answer. Yeah. Uh, you know we love search, we know we love discovery. That's kind of uh, dear to our hearts. So the BI market, essentially the modern advanced yes. analytics, is essentially discovery-based. You mentioned oh, yeah. fraud detection. That's essentially going out and taking data in, running algorithms, machine learning, whatever uh, other techniques are out there that, that the computer sciences drive. So search concept is keyword search. Essentially, you ask for something, you get something back. But now, with yeah. big data, it's a lot of personalization. Yes. You're seeing personalization, you're seeing uh, the persona of one, whether it's marketing, fraud detection. Yeah. How does the discovery of of data serving the end user. What's your vision on that? Obviously, you know, you worked at Yahoo, so you have experience in search, and you know a little bit about the kind of the old web search. In the modern discovery, where it's real time, event processing, graph, graph data, things of that nature, it's all, all new happening right. What's your vision on that? Uh, so for, first, I want to lock on something very key you said, which is personalization. Uh, a very, a very uh, good, uh, important, fundamental part of this movement is personalization. It's the fact that now, no longer will we as companies, organizations, and governments look to classify you as one of a group of people, like build a segment that you are a male in this age range, you, you, you live in this zip code, you must love to buy diapers. I don't know, I just yeah. made that up right now. 
So, so we tended to do that. That's the old way of doing things. What we are doing now as companies, organizations. But sometimes we were right. So, some, <laughs> yeah. so, sometimes <laughs> you, you would be right. But Every now of, and then, right. Most, actually, yeah. most of the time you'd, you'd be wrong. Absolutely. Versus yeah. if you were really modeling the, what I, Amr, care about, what, what I, Amr, am doing, then you will come with the much better answer for me that will be right most of the time and you will avoid essentially upsetting me every now and then. So a big part of, of this movement is actually is about that. It's going away from modeling segments of people, segments of products, to modeling every single thing. And actually that's what's driving big data, is we're modeling every single thing. What's happening to my product, what's happening to my trade trans crowd transaction, is Amr a terrorist or Amr not a terrorist? What, that's really how uh, we're getting. We're getting the hook here. I know you got to oh, go, but I want to get a quick, some, get you to address some of the tech that you see happening evolve. That's some machine learning. You're yes. seeing some some cool tech out there on the computer science side. What yes. else do you see? What's your vision around some of the things that are going to make this new discovery happen in, in in this whole new way? It's not just crawling, pounding an index with a keyword. There's a lot more complexity involved. What vision do you have for that? Yeah, the the key the tech part involved. going forward. The key part going forward is how can we bring all of these capabilities together? How can we do the search and do the interactive SQL and do the statistics, the, the statistics on the same underlying data asset, that's going to be the key. That's the key in the future. That's the key capability that now all of us as companies working on this enterprise data hub mission need to be focused so on. So that's Spark, that's Storm, is that machine learning? What Can you name some text that you're watching closely? It's all of the above. It's all of the apps. It's all of the apps that you can bring to your data assets. How do you bring them together? with a common management layer, a common security layer, and most important of all, a common metadata layer that allow you to make all of these apps leverage your platform. Some of them is systems like uh, Storm, which we announced, uh, I mean, thanks, uh, sorry, uh, Spark. Uh, and Spark allows you essentially to uh, do uh, data mining and machine learning. That's what Spark is really good at, and we announced this partnership with Databricks. But just one of them, that's just one of them. It's not about that. Yeah. It's about the whole. It's about, again, it's, it's going it's back to the totality Android device. of the ecosystem. Exactly. And, and going the back to the, the power of the iPhone, the power of Android devices is not that they can do maps, it's not that they can do calendar, it's not that they can do email and contacts and games. It's about that they can do all of these things in a holistic, unified experience. Yeah. I mean, I that is the future. That's the operating system, the data operating system. Love it. Uh, Amr Awadallah, great to have you on the Cube again. You know, we're proud. Four years ago, we did the Cube when, when you know, Dave didn't even hear about what Hadoop was. We came That's back true, from actually, storage yeah. and came up, and I made him fly. You gotta come to Hadoop World. What the hell's Hadoop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four years later, now he's Hadoop you know, <laughs> they can't. We're like a tick. We're embedded in the, <laughs> we're like a tick in the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, we can't get rid of us. Right. This is the Cube. We're Amr Awadallah. Thanks for coming on. Great. Thanks for support. I was very appreciative of you guys and you personally for helping us out even no. four years ago no, okay. when you guys were 30 employees. How many employees now? Over 4,000? What's Almost, the number? No, no, no. 500. 500. <laughs> 500. <laughs> the new space Next looks, year, 4,000. The new <laughs> space looks good in, in Palo Alto. This is Amar Odell, co-founder of Cloudera, a visionary tech athlete, friend of theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.